we do get quite crusty. Um, I think the calf's journey's made before you even pick them up. You know, you're relying a lot on the on the um, the dairy farm before you to, to make sure they've had adequate frostrum. Yeah, as they say, the three Qs. You know, quality, quantity, and um, quickly. Um, so you're relying a lot on them as far as, as health goes. And then up for, for, for me when I'm selecting cars, you know, I'm looking for good uh, colour markers, um, glossy coats, no rough, rough coats. Um, and you know, I'm looking for, for clear eyes, not cloudy eyes, um, lots of vigour in them. Um, you know, another one, you know, the ears have to be up, opposed to um, uh, slightly down, that can indicate a crop calf. You'll find healthy calves when they first stand up, um, they'll have that bit of a stretch uh, across their back and they'll normally arch their tail, that's a sign of a good, good calf having a stretch. Crook calves generally as a rule of thumb, when they stand up, they'll be quite um, hunched over. And again, look for any milk around their mouth. Um, if they've got lots of dried milk around their mouth, could indicate that they've been buggering around on the teeth. Um, and you know, not getting on and just drinking sort of nice and smooth, they're, they're playing with the teeth, so they are, that is signs that they are getting crook as well. Right, because they're not drinking properly? Yeah, not drinking yeah. properly, um, or yeah, it could be crook or just yeah, not interested in the teeth. You know, and when we pick them up at four days old, they should be really interested in that teeth and know what it's about, really. I think it's pretty, uh, pretty crucial that you do take the time and, yeah. and look for the, look for you know as many signs as you can on those calves. Um, you know, no navel infections. Um, navel infections normally is the first one to hit the front knees, and they will swell up uh, um, and start limping as well. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to definitely put your hand, you know, in their mouth. You don't want to be you know, testing them and uh, quite cold in the mouth, oh, that right. can come across as, you know, something's not quite right as well. So do you have quite good relationships with the farmers that you purchased your car Yeah, off? I think um, if you build that relationship with those, those farmers, they they kind of know what you what you expect and um, and I think it works, you know, works well if you're buying from the same guy and, you know, you build that trust, I suppose, between both of you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, everything sort of seems to run smooth. It's really important where you get the calves from. I believe in the earlier part of the season, um, carving's, carving's new, um, the sheds are nice and clean, and everyone's full of energy, you know, they're, they're revved up for that new season. Yeah. And I think the calves you pick up in the early stages are always a lot healthier. I think as um, carving goes on and uh, people get a lot more tired, I don't think the time is spent with those, those calves later in the season. Um, so I think that's where possibly you do get a wee, wee few crook, you know, crook calves coming through. But that's where we have to step the game up. So how important is transportation of calves if you're going around picking them up from around the country? You know for yourself, in fact, if you're going along, you know, with your windows open and it's cold, you certainly put your windows up in your vehicle, you know, yeah. and you expect that um, for your calves too, you know, you, you certainly wouldn't drive along in the middle of winter, you know, six o'clock in the morning to go and pick up calves with yeah. your windows down. Um, so I think, you know, a good trailer that's enclosed, it's got good air venting for the heat to rise and come out, um, yeah, it is a critical part because you don't want anyone getting the chills, uh, potentially getting pneumonia, you know, when you get them home. You know, whether you're travelling, you know, 10 minutes, you know, half an hour, an hour, um, it's certainly stressful for them, you know, and, and when you, you're lifting them off the trailer, you know, their eyes are bulging out, you know, they've been through that stress, so it's time to, I think it's important to get your shed set up well and get your calf pellets in there, get your, you know, your, your water in there take them off the trailer and leave them for an hour and don't even touch them. Yeah. You know, let them settle down and, and just see the new environment really. Yeah, yeah. So this is a pretty nice trailer you've got here, Abby, so can you tell me a bit more about it? Yeah, so basically we've got this sort of custom build, I suppose, um, mainly with the the, uh, the cage. The the trailer was a, a tandem axle car transport, brand new car transport trailer, um, which we converted into uh, obviously a flat deck and then got the uh, custom built um, cage for it and you know, two big opening and sliding doors and compartments in there and seems to work fantastic, reasonably yeah. low to the ground as well. So. Yeah, I guess one of the, the biggest things that can happen when you're transporting calves is that they can also bruise their navel uh, and you can get navel ill. So it's also really important that they, they're somewhere that's not overcrowded, that they feel comfortable, that they're as warm and dry as possible uh, so that when you get them there at the end of the day, they're as healthy as they can be. Yeah, I think um, that's another good point too is when you get to the dairy farmer's place and you know, after a while, you know, you've been picking up there for a few years, you get to know them. <coughs> Um, and I think it's very critical that if you're going to sp spend time talking to the farmer, um, you do that first and you load the calves last. Yeah, it's a good time. Um, because I find, yeah, if you load your calves first and then you stand there for a talk, they start sitting down. The worst thing is once you start travelling, um, those guys sitting down kind of foot trip the top ones who are standing up. Um, and of course there's no way they can get up. So we always make sure that before we leave the farm, 
everyone's standing up, yeah. um, no one's sitting down, and um, we've got rubber mats in here as well, and that's just to help them, obviously, for gripping, you know, going around the corners. Yeah. And, you know, you know you've got a load on board, so you tend to drive, you know, a lot slower and, yeah. and slow well up before you've got an intersection. You know, don't go up there and obviously put your brakes on hard. Yeah, you have to be sensible. You are carrying a live load at the end of the day, yeah. so, you know, yeah. you do have to drive safe and, and at a low speed as well. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah.